Welcome to the AWS Institute Masterclass on Artificial Intelligence, including Machine Learning and Generative AI. I'm Neil. I'm a Principal Machine Learning Strategist. And my name is Marian. I'm working as a Senior Technical Product Manager for Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. And in this Masterclass, we're going to have four modules and we're going to be covering a general introduction to the topic of Machine Learning and Generative AI, as well as helping you build out that clear path on how you're going to get started and how you're going to be able to scale your entire organization to benefit from these technological advances. Let's maybe start by getting some of the terminology out of the way. So artificial intelligence, or AI, is a term to describe computer systems that behave in a way that we think emulates human intelligence. Machine learning, or short ML, sits within artificial intelligence and is an umbrella term for a set of technologies that allow computers to learn from data and experience. Machine learning systems represent that learned understanding of the world in what we call a machine learning model. One example could be a model that predicts a certain parameter, like, for example, how much water you would expect in a hydropower station. Recent advances in research and compute power have produced a set of machine learning methods that can build machine learning models from raw data. And raw data in that context means that there is less effort required to prepare those data before using it to build a model. These methods are often referred to as deep learning methods. The term deep is used as these machine learning systems typically use a multitude of processing layers to train and build such a model. There are a range of typical applications for such deep learning models, such as image classification or speech recognition. And Perhaps the most recent and I think really exciting development is the so-called generative models or Gen AI. You know, these differ from, unlike the previous models that we might now think of as traditional ML, they were trained for a single purpose. They've been trained, but the generative AI models are trained on a truly huge data set and cross you know, many weeks of training on a massive array of compute power. And they're now able to actually produce a very general purpose model that's incredibly powerful. It means that it can actually help answer a whole range of questions rather than the traditional models, which became very expert in one specialized niche area. Yeah, in the traditional ML, the model would be used to produce a single output. As you said, in the hydroelectric scheme, the amount of water, you know, the volume of water will be the predictive thing you're trying to do. But now you could build out a classifications of fraud or not fraud in traditional models, but with the new techniques, they could then generate text or generate image or generate sound, such as music, in a truly free form and more creative manner. If some of these generative models are generating text and images in such a way that they can then be adapted and used for very many different applications, which is truly exciting. And I think going to be transformative to a number of business industries, etc. in our time ahead. The models are often referred to as foundation models in that they're reused many times, or perhaps large language models, or LLMs. And the ability to use these foundation models and machine learning in general is a really tremendous accelerator in how we can actually tackle valuable applications in the domain of the public sector. And with this opportunity space, it's amplified by just the accessibility of this technology to the general public and the ability to use it using natural language. So there is a huge interest and also use within our population. So while this, there's much excitement, at the same time, leaders within the public sector need to reflect on the implication of the adoption of these technologies at scale and ensure responsible use. It's important to make sure that applications of artificial intelligence are trustworthy, that they are not biased such that some groups of people are treated unfairly, that they are built from data which is appropriate to use and where we need to can explain the model outcomes and the decisions that are made. So let's explore some opportunities and discuss how the public sector can benefit from these technologies already today. Let's do that. So if we think about the characteristics for artificial intelligence, generative AI, and when it can be a suitable approach, it's kind of tempting to think forward from what can I do with the shiny technology? I see that kind of the wrong way around. Rather, we should be working backwards from what the actual business challenges are and thinking very crisply and carefully about that business challenge, and particularly how value will be created. It's really good to put the effort in to think carefully about the business value side and how you will measure it, as well as what the cost would be to address that challenge and everything else as well as the ML. Then you can really consider, you know, 
does the cost benefit equation work out? Is the juice worth the squeeze, as they might say? But let's think about some of the use cases that we've seen. I mean, there's been many of these across many different areas. I mean, maybe decision effectiveness is probably one of the first ones I'd, I'd just like to think about. How can you make sure that all the right data is being thought about to make the best possible decision? Customer service agents are a good example of this, where actually they've got a huge catalog of back cases which have been resolved. They've got lots of FAQs. They've got so much documentation. Using AI to help them in that moment to actually bring to bear the right insight for that particular interaction, amazing way of making better decisions. As well as effectiveness, decision efficiency is another key thing. Can we make more decisions more quickly or improve processes to be faster? Worked with the land registry in the UK and we look after the sale of land from one person to another and the exchange of title deeds. They have a team of legal experts who have to look at the early version of a contract and the late version of the contract and page through 40 to 60, 80 pages of legal text, looking for the bits which are different and deciding, do they matter? They've used a, an intelligent document pipeline that actually takes AI to analyze the differences and categorize them, massively improving the throughput of their work and improving what they're doing. Risk, risk is a huge area for the public sector and mitigating risk is something that we need to think about. We can use data and we can use models to do this. I mean, one example with uh, um, a council that I worked with is around identification of the frail and elderly, older people who may be at risk of falls. Are there things you can do to put on interventions that may improve their resilience and make them less likely to have you know, a tragic fall with the negative consequences that would come with it? User experience. We all interact with the public sector in a variety of different ways we can actually spot the friction points and start to extract those and use AI to make that quicker and smoother. I worked extensively with part of our health service in the UK and they, they had a call center where they used AI as the front end. So people would speak initially to the AI and describe their problem. And if the AI could actually just answer their problem, it would immediately do so 24 seven. If it didn't, then you could pass through to the agent and it would, the agent would then be helped to resolve this. 48% of their calls could be answered straight away automatically with the AI. When it did pass through to the, the actual call center agents, the AI could also be used to understand what the caller wanted and who they were and prompt the agent to get them on the right screen so they could help much more quickly. Policy and policy decisions working towards our sustainability objectives, key area for everybody at the moment. Machine learning could be part of the answer in this area. If we could better match supply and demand, it may be in simple things like heat and lighting in our buildings. If we could build machine learning models, which are going to predict occupancy by hour, by floor within each of our buildings, we could then identify when do we want the lights and the heating to be turned on for the optimal effect. Another example might be in our route optimization of, you know, perhaps we're sending out waste collection vehicles. If we make a tiny improvement in their routes, that will add up to a significant fuel saving over time. There's massive optimizations to be done around public policy. It's a big challenges with public policy to identify big decisions that we may need to make. For example, how could we actually start to achieve our climate change goals, our sustainability goals? To do that, we need to think about managing heat and energy across regions, across towns and cities. And there's really big policy decisions that's impacting this. Policy decisions around transportation, around economic development, around housing. It's hard to do that without looking at the data, but the data is tricky to analyze. Data on populations and their likely response and behavior change. Data on future transport demand. Data on economic growth. As well as the best practice and guidance around the world in terms of how to tackle climate change in these areas. Generative AI and machine learning could help policy officers by drawing on all of this data to make the very best recommendations in their area and make their job more effective. Fraud. Fraud is another really interesting area. So I work with the DWP in the UK and they're the benefits agency. We'll actually cover how they're using machine learning operations or ML ops in our later module, but they're specifically tackling the area of fraud with millions of benefit claimants. Some of them are not claiming correctly and they're using machine learning models to identify the likelihood that a particular claim is fraudulent and then triage that through to a human investigator to check. And ideally to arrest that particular 
claim early before too much money is paid out, which may never get paid back hard. Operational efficiency is something that we could think about really as a regional area. I work with the uh, West Midlands in the UK, the area of the towns, cities around Birmingham. They actually wanted to improve their road networks. And so they took the data from all of their cameras, tracking the movement of the cars, lorries, and buses in real time and fed it from hundreds and thousands of cameras into a machine learning model, slowing through and streaming data set to identify the likely future near time congestion so that they could then take action to figure out which of the lights they might change, which of the routes they might shift to try to optimize on a regional level in near time. Amazing work. Further afield, perhaps the Los Angeles County Public Defender's Office over in America. They had teams of secretaries manually trying to extract from thousands of documents the names of the litigants, the claimants, the charge, the date, the location. And all these documents were in different formats, which makes it really hard for most techniques to sort of automate. But using generative AI, we can actually understand the context of the document and pull out these key entities in an intelligent document processing that actually managed the whole pipeline for them. They started to see 85% savings in the manual effort required across those thousands of documents. I think I've shown there's a whole range of incredibly exciting use cases, and it's an amazing moment to be using AI in the public sector. These were a set of very exciting examples. Each machine learning system must respect the rule of law, human rights, and values of equity, privacy, and fairness. We will share some best practices throughout the modules of this masterclass around responsible AI, which you can see as a starting point, but not as a final answer as this field is rapidly evolving. We'll further highlight which domains within an organization need to be transformed and which capabilities need to be developed in order to get started and get scaled. So in this module, we have learned what artificial intelligence is. We've learned how machine learning, deep learning and generative AI fall under that umbrella and we have examined potential use cases for artificial intelligence in the public sector. In the next module, we will learn how to get started. See you there.